I've always been interested in medical mysteries and applying technology and computer science and genomics and genetics to these problems. I think it's a problem that I knew from the beginning we could do better and faster and more accurately. So I've had several people kind of ask what's going on, and especially what's funny is kind of older people because they cut right to Jace. What happened to you? Like, <laughs> so I first heard about Glenn when I got a phone call from a former medical school classmate of mine. He had had a hard time walking and had been falling over and had developed new double vision. And he had previously been a very healthy guy. I started to get a vertigo a couple of times a week. They got more severe, longer periods for like 20 or 30 minutes. I had to you know, like lay down. I couldn't watch kids, that ends up. And so from the clinician's perspective, it can be really vexing trying to understand which way to go if there is no diagnosis. And so oftentimes these patients go on long diagnostic odysseys with send out test after send out test being inconclusive, never really understanding what the root etiology or cause is. The different diagnoses were encephalitis, MS, myasthenia gravis, a possible fungal infection, a possible viral infection, a possible bacterial infection. About five years before that, he had been treated successfully for testicular cancer. When someone has had a previous cancer, you always worry that could there be an immune reaction to the cancer that's having secondary effects on the brain. Perineoplastic disease is a situation in which a person has a cancer somewhere in their body and their immune system attacks that cancer, which is the appropriate thing to do. You want the immune system to attack your cancer. However, a cancer may misexpress certain proteins. It may produce a neural protein from the brain somewhere else in the body that it shouldn't be. And during the course of an appropriate immune response to that cancer, the body also develops immunity to that protein somewhere else in the body, like in the brain. And so, while the immune system fights the cancer, it inadvertently fights your own body somewhere else. Um, we decided to try a treatment, just uh, steroids, to try and suppress any inflammation that was going on. We knew that this person was suffering from an autoimmune-like syndrome because when he was given steroids, it seemed to help his condition. That's the hallmark of an autoimmune condition. But we didn't know what his antibodies or his immune system was targeting inside him. Then we grab our phage. We got a sample of Glenn's cerebral spinal fluid and our postdoc in the lab, Callie Mendel-Brem, together with a graduate student in the lab, Brian O'Donovan, tested his CSF for antibodies using an unbiased technique, in this case, a phage display technique known as FIPSI. We were able to assay the entire human proteome, all the proteins that are in the human bodies, to ask what antibodies he's making. And it was amazing because what they found is he's making a ton of antibody to one specific protein, this protein called Kelchlike 11. I've incubated this cerebellar slice with our patient zero. Every red dot represents where patient zero's antibodies stuck around when we incubated their CSF with this section of brain. So when we got the first results on Glenn, that he was making antibodies to a particular protein, this protein called Couchlike 11, I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Might there be other people who exactly have the same thing? And to do that, we need to look elsewhere. Approximately 20 years ago, uh, we identified the first uh, patient with a staining pattern on mouse tissue that uh, we call sparkles. Uh, they're all men. Uh, they generally present with a double vision, uh, ataxia, uh, sometimes hearing loss. Uh, when we investigate for underlying malignancy, we find testicular cancer. And the Mayo Clinic was describing these group of patients with seminoma and this really weird molecular data that they were looking at, and I thought, you know, we have pa a patient with a seminoma who has a very weird, uh, it's immunofluorescent pattern on rodent brain. This particular sample from Glenn gave us a, an immunofluorescence pattern which, which matched sparkles. Our patient zero at UCSF and all of the patients that Mayo Clinic had saved for the last 20 years, every patient produces the same, the same pattern. Glenn had the same antibody which we had been collecting for the last few years and given his clinical story which matched the other sparkles patient we were 
confident that all these patients had a common autoimmune biomarker. So it was a great day when we looked down the microscope and said, oh my gosh, Michael Wilson's patient has this disease. For me, the really um, the big moment came when he said, you know, not only do we think we know what this is, but we think that there are other people who, who have the same thing. You know, Glenn was upbeat and got great spirits, you know that, but his dad like broke down crying in the room and I realized the burden and stress on him was probably even greater than it was on Glenn. It's not one person who goes through the Odyssey, it's everybody around them goes with them on that Odyssey and bears part of the stress. Uh, I was diagnosed with the uh, seminoma in 2014. After the cancer, uh, I would like move my arm carefully. I would feel like a small shake. I started feeling like it might be a bigger issue where I went from not really having any speech issues to really having trouble. And it was recognized that KC had the same staining pattern um, that fits with this, this new syndrome uh, associated with the, the Kelch proteins. I feel really lucky to get an accurate diagnosis because I know lots of people don't and they spend their lives searching for answers because there might not be answers. If the disease goes undiagnosed, the inflammation continues to brew. And given the debilitating nature of the disease, if not diagnosed early, it reaches a level of irreversibility. So together with the Mayo Clinic, this autoimmune marker will now be included on a panel of tests so that anybody under suspicion of having such a thing will be automatically screened for.